today I'm going to walk through a purifier build for all levels. I'm going to talk about weapons and specials and the second best option to use if you don't have it. Hey everyone, Derpy here. Welcome back to another Battle Pirates video. As I get started, there are three things that I need to say. First of all is that throughout this video, you need to pay attention to your dock weight, or your weight and your dock level, I should say. This is because the Outpost 13 level dock can only fit 800k tons, but your ship can be a lot bigger than that. If you build five of these things at max weight, or even four of them, you're not going to be able to fit them all in your dock. So your options are, number one, make sure your outpost and dock will be maxed by the time raid starts, which may be hard for some people, or option two is to build two ships plus the flagship, that's three in total, at max weight and at max upgrade levels possible, pretty much ignoring your other two ships, four and five. So three really strong ships or five regular ones or some combination thereof. Just make sure that what you do can fit in 800k dock weight if you won't have that by outpost 14. Now, by the rate I should say. Now, Kixai has of course said that the targets will be tuned to three ships, which is going to be uh, difficult for us to really establish how true that is. In the past, they have had some varied success of what works and what doesn't. I will say that two years ago, the three ships worked great. One year ago, it didn't. So things might be a little bit hard. Build three strong ships or five weak ones and max your dock. The second thing is that if you are enjoying this video, if it does help you, go ahead and share this with your alliance members, your friends, etc. If it helps you, it will help them. The third thing is that I do share all my builds in a builds document linked in the YouTube description. Go ahead and find that. It's a Google Doc. Open it up and it gives you all the builds I've got out there, including the purifier build, which I will stick in there. Now, starting out here, there's a few things equipped to the ship that are really standard. The first of this is the weapon that came with the hull. I have the limited one because I like spending 20 million points on that stuff. And it works out pretty well. If you don't have this, use the regular one. The interesting things for this weapon is that its splash increases as it continues to fire. Pro tip, turn your projectile speed, projectile explosions off in your settings if you don't want a seizure. I asked Kixai if they could do anything about turning down some of that stuff, but I've received no response. I've also seemed to notice this thing shooting over walls, or maybe that's just the splash. You'll have to keep an eye on that when we get into the raid. Just put that on across all your ships there. The only considerations are if weight is an issue or if you are, and you can't even use countermeasures. There is one exception to this, which we'll talk about at the very end of the video. The CIC that comes with the hull is also good. Go ahead and use that there. It increases wall damage and it helps each purifier in the fleet with an unlimited range. So you can have this on one ship in the corner and it boosts everything else, which could be a reason for people who usually just build four, like I do, to build the fifth one, of course, dock weight permitting. Then the armors just use one of each. I have no idea which is better, which you'll take more damage of. I'm guessing ballistic will be a guaranteed damage source and radioactive will be a skill one, but I'm really not too sure. Just keep in mind that the survival 60k is not as large as it may first seem because the tier 11 has a different tier constant. That's neither here nor there. There's not really a second best armor choice for this thing. Uh, maybe the tier 10 flat armor, something else that gives you radioactive bonuses, is probably what I would go for. So if you use the tier 10.5, for example, you get ballistic damage, go down to tier 10 and you get radioactive damage. I'd probably stick that one on, although your survival is way lower. In terms of these specials, the first one you want to use is an engine. The best engine for this hole is actually an old one. We did not get a new engine for this one, so an Ares War engine is what you want to use. And this does give you bonus combat speed 120%. If you're mixing and matching engines, just make sure they have the same combat speed. The second best for this one is an older Siege engine, or possibly the Scorcher Turbine, which does give you 10% damage. Although, Ares War engine, most people probably have that. Option two is something to increase your building damage, and high pressure piping is the clear favorite here. It gives you more damage than Siege Targeting 4, which is the second best option. I would definitely use this guy right here. It gives you building damage, radioactive damage, and projectile speed. Projectile speed, probably not too important, but the other two things are certainly nice. Special number three is a radioactive damage special. This is going to be radioactive battery two. If you don't have this, radioactive battery one is a next best option here. 
which is a downgrade, but redirected battery too. It was in the pillage or the raid or TLC, wherever it was, I picked up five of them, so I'll go ahead and put that on. The next one, Special 4, is one that came with the hold again. This is Viscosity Regulator 2. The second best is the regular Viscosity Regulator. It just increases radioactive damage and splash. This is a thrower, so it will benefit from splash, which is fairly unusual for radioactive weapons, all things considered. Speaking of which, you'll notice the damage on these weapons is really, really low, but the hole has an insane thrower damage boost of 7.7 .7 times, which, if you're wondering about that, that's where that happens. You increase the building damage too by a ton. This is just to prevent you from trying to use launchers, because those can shoot over mountains, and Kickside does have mountains in the VXP target that we saw. Now, special slot number 5 is going to be another one that came out around the time of the hole did. This is the Charged Plasma Ray, which some of you may have actually put on your Winter Fangs because it is really good there. i definitely throw this on here, use it. It is a pure upgrade over Insulated Charge Capacitors, which is the second best option. And again, it's great if you can do it. I believe it was in the TLC for the Purifier, so you should have a whole bunch of them. Now, again, Insulated Charge Capacitors is the second best option. Use that on there if you at all can. Now, what you'll notice right now is that I'm already over 200,000 pounds. 200,000 tons, rather, is the amount you need to stay under to use four ships in the fleet. So if you were trying to go with four sort of medium ships, that's the number you want to be wary of. Probably take the armors off in that case, although giving up the survival does hurt quite a fair amount. The last special is actually going to depend on how you like to drive. The way I've always approached the Battle Park videos is that I'm not trying to tell you this is 100% the best option. I just want to tell you the different options out there. You can make the best decision that's right for your playstyle. With that in mind, there are a few different things you may want to consider for this last special slot. What you should not consider and what you saw on the thumbnail is the Agility, Syst or Agility Targeting 4. There are whatever this is called, Agility System 4. You should not use that because Guidance Core Number 3 has the same exact stats on it, the same evade, 49.5%, and the slow and stun resistance are never helpful in PvE in the current game. The only thing Agility System 4 does is it gives you a different color special, and it adds a few hours of build time per hole. So I don't want to see anyone using this unless you like longer build time of ships, in which case, go for it. But you could put Guidance Number 3 across all your ships, it would be okay. I don't think, however, that's the best option. Because the targets actually do have some accuracy-based weapons that I can see, I don't even think that they are splash hybrid accuracy weapons, I think they're just straight-up accuracy. For that reason, and because just the holes that I brought into VXP Weekend, which have about 30% evade, are actually, those holes are actually having a lot miss. Evade's not going to be the most important, and a super evade tank is not going to be necessary. That being said, to minimize your damage, evade is still helpful, even if it's not super helpful like in some of the previous raids where the enemy turrets have had 200% accuracy. Evade will still help and will still reduce your damage. But I also want to use more reload on the stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build all my backline ships. Well, I'll be careful about which ship I call it tank versus not. I'm going to build most of my ships there, all but one, are going to have insulated charge capacitors, which was actually an alternate special I mentioned. This is great, it gives you more reload and more combat speed, which is a dangerous combination here if you build things wrong. Now, what you're picturing right here is what I'm calling the damage build. I'm going to build all but one ships as the damage build, and one ship is going to have to swing to using a slightly higher, I'm talking instead of 98, I'm going to go for 99 combat speed, and higher evade. So I'm going to do that by taking this last special and switching it. You could also just build five damage ships if you wanted to. I'm going to switch that last special to be a hyper 30, because that gives you the same percent combat speed and gives you a little bit of evade. Projectile speed is a wash. So what this does is it increases your evade by a pretty substantial amount, so that should help you take less damage, but I don't really want to spend time to drive my flagship and have it be all tanky and make sure I'm uh, really trying to optimize what ship is right in front there. I want to do it automatically by itself. For that reason, we're just going to take one of these weapons and put on a D-35S siege cannon instead, 
and just call that good because that will give you 5% combat speed, which brings your combat speed up to 99 instead of 98. This means that the whatever ship I build as the evade ship will be just one range unit out ahead most times and it will do just a little bit more. It will take all the radioactive damage. The problem with this version and why I might not actually do this is it's going to be hard to balance what ship is instant repair and what ship doesn't. If you build something like this, just realize you might take 10 minutes damage on the faster one and zero minutes damage on the other ones. So the option that if you don't want to do this one, and I probably am going for, is to build them just all the same straight reload version. The 55% of Vega on the flag is really not enough per se to get it down to uh, reasonable damage levels. So the just all reload insulated charge capacitor is probably the best option if I think about it a little further. There are a few other options for the build that you could do including using things like the lower cannon mount or one or two, whichever one actually adds evade, and doing some really fancy stuff with siege mortar fives and some, some, some stuff like that. Just trying to get a super high evade tank, although I don't really think I have the patience for driving that this raid cycle around. Long story short, the thing shown on the screen is what I'm going to go for. If you do end up using the evade build, just make sure that you put the not flagship as the evade tank. This is because I'm expecting more survival to come out at X1, even though we haven't seen that. And you can get the regular ships to X1 a lot faster than you can the flagship. If your flagship does have defensive bonuses, build the flag as the faster one. If it has offensive bonuses, which it probably will, especially at U3, it definitely does, build it as a regular ship and build the other ones as an evade tank. The there are just a few other nuanced things, but I'm not really going to get into that for now. If you do have any questions on any of the build, etc. that I've shown on screen, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Anyway, I want to go ahead and say thank you to everyone whose name appears on screen right about now. And as always, and until next time, this is going to be Derby signing out, helping you be a better pirate.